the biggest underwater telescope at a depth of 3,500 meters. Toulon is a city in southeastern France with about 170,000 inhabitants. It's located on the Mediterranean coast on the Bay of the Grande Rada. It is the first city on the Côte d'Azur starting from the west. Porto Palo di Capo Passero is a very small Italian town of about 4,000 inhabitants, located in Sicily. It's sadly famous for the so-called Christmas 96 massacre a tragic event that devastated the country on December 25th and 26th of 1996. The sinking of a ship carrying migrants claimed 283 victims, and it represented the largest naval tragedy in the Mediterranean since the end of the Second World War. Pylos instead is a Greek town in Greece of 55,000 inhabitants, according to the 2001 census data. It is historically known for having been the scene of two naval battles, the Battle of Pylos, 425 BC, during the Peloponnesian War, and the Battle of Navarino, 1827, an episode of the Greek War of Independence. But why are we talking about these cities? Even if they seem to have nothing in common, something is going on between them, something that links them. And it has something to do with astrophysics, neutrinos, and telescopes. Keep watching the video to get to know more about it. You will be amazed. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community. They have thousands of classes covering all different types of skills and especially creative skills. And they have a premium membership and this gives you unlimited access to all of the classes. For example, film and video, photography, fine art, and many others. So you can join in and learn all about the skills that you want. It's a great place to fuel your curiosity and your creativity because you can look up any kind of class that you might be curious about or a skill that you want to tackle. A class that I've found really useful for me is Productivity for Creatives by Thomas Frank. It helped me a lot to boost my productivity, so if you're interested to improve your daily productivity, this class will really help you. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. The initial idea of neutrino astronomy beyond the solar system rested on two arguments. First, astronomers thought that a supernova collapse in our galaxy, the Milky Way, would be accompanied by bursts of highly energetic neutrinos. Second, pulsars accelerating particles thanks to their enormous magnetic fields must accelerate particles and generate neutrinos as decay products of some mother particles called pions. In the 50s and 60s, astronomers were struggling to find a good way to detect such neutrinos. The first ideas to detect cosmic high-energy neutrinos date back to those years. Brilliant minds suggest constructing a large Cherenkov counter where the Cherenkov light is the light that extraterrestrial particles release when they penetrate into the Earth's atmosphere. More precisely, Cherenkov radiation is the light produced when a particle travels through a medium faster than light. Nothing travels faster than light in a vacuum, but the light is slowed down when it travels through a medium like water, for instance, while other particles are not. The result is the eerie blue glow produced in nuclear reactors which is analogous to a sonic boom, but for light. Just like a fighter jet produces sound waves that travel slower than the jet itself, the particle produces light waves that travel slower than the particle itself. This Cherenkov counter would be about 15 meters in diameter, located in a mine far underground. This was an unusual choice. What's the purpose of an underground telescope? How can we detect signals from the sky if we put them in a mine? Anyway, they also told that the counter should be surrounded with photomultipliers to detect the events and enclosed in a shell of scintillating material to distinguish neutrino events from those caused by other particles. Such a detector would be very expensive. So was the juice worth the squeeze? It depended on the estimated number of neutrinos they were expecting to detect by means of such a telescope. During the 60s, no acceptable theory of the origin and extraterrestrial diffusion existed, so that the cosmic neutrino flux could not be usefully predicted. But things changed when in the late 60s and early 70s, many objects were discovered. For example, the first quasar in 1963, 
pulsars in 1967 and X-ray binaries with a black hole in 1972. These objects were identified as possible neutrino emitters, giving an enormous push to theoretical physics activity. Soon after, scientists understood the importance of building such telescopes and the importance of neutrinos in terms of cosmology, physics, and astrophysical processes. That's why, as today, underground and underwater telescopes are not so unusual. They are giving us precious scientific results. But why do we need to place such telescopes underwater or underground? Neutrinos are tiny particles. They are so tiny that their interaction rate with the matter in the universe is really low. Because they only weakly interact with other particles, neutrino detectors must be very large to detect a significant number of them. Yet neutrinos are omnipresent in nature. Every second, tens of billions of them pass through every square centimeter of our bodies, and you can't even notice that. We are literally bombarded with neutrinos. Many of them were created right after the Big Bang, but according to theory, we think some of them originate from magnificent events in the universe, such as colliding black holes or gamma ray bursts from exploding stars, or violent events at the cores of distant galaxies. Due to their low interaction with matter and due to their low mass and lack of electric charge, neutrinos are extremely difficult to detect. Many neutrino detectors are located deep underground in order to minimize the interference of cosmic rays on the detectors. While it might seem empty space is a noisy place, an infinity of different signals are constantly bouncing around, and reducing this noise is one of the main challenges of a neutrino detector. Some famous neutrino detectors are Super Kamiokanda, buried at 3,300 feet beneath Mount Aikano, near the city of Hida in Japan. Another one is the Ice Cube Detector, located in the South Pole beneath the Antarctic ice. With ongoing activities about neutrinos and the first ideas on a telescope in polar ice, the exploration of the Mediterranean Sea as a site for an underwater neutrino telescope was quite natural, and this is what the three cities mentioned before have in common. They are located in the Mediterranean region. At about 80 kilometers to the coast of Capo Passero in Sicily, and at a depth of 3,500 meters beneath the sea, scientists and engineers are building the biggest underwater telescope ever built. Sailed from Malta on board the Miss Maryland tide ship, the revelator's components were surrounded with a shell and put into the Sicilian Sea. This brand new telescope is called Cubic Kilometer Neutrino Telescope or KM3-NET. It is a future European scientific research infrastructure. It will contain a new generation neutrino telescope in the form of a Cherenkov detector with a volume of 5 cubic kilometers distributed in three positions in the Mediterranean. KM3-NET FR off Toulon, France, KM3-NET IT in Italy, Capo Passero, and KM3-NET GR off Pylos, Greece. As you can see, science has the ability to link cities that apparently don't have anything in common. This is what we mean when we say that science is an instrument of peace among countries and people. This amazing telescope will search for neutrinos from supernova remnants, gamma ray bursts, or extragalactic object collisions. It will be a powerful tool because it could also help in the search for dark matter in our universe. Its sensors will aim to detect light in deep water from charged particles originating from neutrino collisions with water or rocks near the detector. The entire infrastructure will also contain instrumentation for other scientific branches such as marine biology and geophysics. The final structure will consist of seven large sub-detectors, six of which will be used for astrophysical purposes. This telescope will be really one of a kind. It will contain about 12,000 pressure-resistant glass spheres attached to 600 strings, and each rope will hold 18 spherical sensors, supported by floats. Each sphere has a diameter of 43 centimeters and contains photomultiplier tubes, connected to the coast by a broadband fiber optic network. As we can read on the KM3Net website, KM3Net is a research infrastructure housing the next-generation neutrino telescopes. Once completed, the telescopes will have detector volumes between megaton and several cubic kilometers of clear seawater. Located in the deepest seas of the Mediterranean, KM3-NET will open a new window on our universe. 
but also contribute to the research of the properties of the elusive neutrino particles. With the ARCA telescope, KM3Net, scientists will search for neutrinos from distant astrophysical sources such as supernovae, gamma-ray bursters, or colliding stars. The ARCA telescope is the instrument for KM3Net scientists studying neutrino properties exploiting neutrinos generated in the Earth's atmosphere. Arrays of thousands of optical sensors will detect the faint light in the deep sea from charged particles originating from collisions of the neutrinos and the Earth. The facility will also house instrumentation for Earth and sea sciences for long-term and online monitoring of the deep sea environment and the sea bottom at depths of several kilometers. Okay, so now we know a lot of things about KM3Net, but we have one question left. Why study neutrinos? Neutrinos are by far the most abundant particles in the universe. The combination of that ghostly presence and the important role neutrinos play in the universe captivates physicists. Neutrinos play a role in many fundamental aspects of our lives. They are produced in nuclear fusion processes that power the sun and stars. They are produced in radioactive decays that provide a source of heat inside our planet. And they are produced in nuclear reactors. Neutrinos are believed to be a vital ingredient in a star's supernova process. These explosions spread heavy elements throughout space, elements that are needed to create the universe we live in. Neutrinos also provide a tool to study the structure of nucleons, protons, and neutrinos, to learn how matter evolved from simple particles into more complex composites of particles, creating everything around us. Talking about cosmology, for example, Neutrinos could play a big role in the asymmetry of matter events that happened in the early universe. Let me explain. The Big Bang produced an equal amount of matter and antimatter. This means, for example, that for each electron, in the beginning, we think there was an anti-electron called a positron. But today's observations are clearly showing that we live in a universe dominated by matter. Where did all of the antimatter go? Scientists think there was a tiny asymmetry that allowed the matter to dominate antimatter. Were neutrinos involved in this asymmetry? It could be. We just have to wait and see what we will discover next. Meanwhile, remember to keep it curious. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. What are your thoughts about neutrinos? Is there anything more you want to hear? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.